Hey guys, once again, we're talking about being broke, and I'm not talking about finances. However, today I'm going to kind of talk about finances. But when I say being broke, I'm really talking about just like with a horse. Um, it may be bred to be a cow horse, but we don't instantly take it to a cow. What we do is we have to do all the pre-work, the precursor work. We need to get the horse broke in order to take it to the cow. And again, that's being broke to the bridle, to the saddle, and all the things that we have to do, pick up his feet and all that kind of stuff. Well, it's the same thing with our walk with God. There's things that you and I need to do out of obedience. We need to yield to the, and submit to the master and allow him to lead us and guide us because he's got a destiny for us, but we have to be obedient to the things he tells us to do. Today, I want to Monday we talked about salvation. Tuesday we talked about baptism. Yesterday we talked about communion. Today I want to talk to you about giving. Now again, this is financial, but really it's more about your obedience to do God, what God tells you to do, which is give. In uh, Malachi chapter 3, verse 8, it says, Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, In what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse. Now, guys, this is a cowboy no-brainer. I personally, in my finances, I don't want to be cursed with a curse. God doesn't curse me with that curse. I choose to be cursed with the curse because I don't give him my tithes and offerings. So if you want to free up your, 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 uh, the finances in your house, here's how you do it. Give up your tithes and offerings. Look at what it says, verse 10. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house, and try me now, test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, and so forth. Do you hear that? Look it. When we do this, when we... When we try this or test this, what God does is he opens up the windows of heaven with such blessings that one translation says that our barns will not contain it. Amen. And then, not only that, that would be good enough, wouldn't it? But now look what he does. He, de he rebukes the devourer. He keeps Satan from trying to steal from us. Boy, that's, again, that's cowboy simple, y'all. Hey, go to um, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 2 Corinthians, oops, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, starting with verse 6, and this is what it says, but this I say, he who sows sparingly will reap sparingly, again, cowboy simple, you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. That's giving. Now, sometimes we think of just money, but also what about our gifts and our talents? What about our time? Uh, what about our energy? There's a lot of things that we can sow that will uh, into the kingdom of God that will bring a harvest. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. So when we give, we don't give, oh gosh, do I have to? No, we give with a cheerful heart, right? But it also says, and not out of necessity. Listen, just because a man walks up to me and he says, hey, I, I don't have food, uh, money for food, I, I need some help, can you help me out? This tells me to, as I purpose in my heart, so I go to God and I say, God, am I supposed to give or am I not supposed to give? To me, this is allowing the Holy Spirit to begin to minister to us, to show us where we're supposed to place this, this seed. It goes on to say, and God is able. Now watch this. When we do all of this, watch the kingdom of God begins to open up for us. God is able to make all grace, that is favor. God is able to make all grace favor abound towards you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Whew. Jump down to verse 10. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower. So who supplies the seed? He does. And bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown. He takes the seed, he gives it to you, and then he multiplies it if you're a sower. If you're a hoarder, 
If you wear it, if you eat it, if you drive it, if you live in it, it ain't going anywhere. But when you sow that seed that he's given you, then he multiplies the seed. You can't outgive God. Bless God. This is all about giving. Hey, I'm Keith Brown. This is Tack Room Devotional. Remember, Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.